I always knew I was going to be an artist. There was never a choice for me. When I was five, that's what I wanted to do. I come from a really creative family. My mother's a writer, my dad was an artist. My early part of my childhood was Minnesota. And the first big artwork that meant a lot to me was George Siegel at the Walker Art Center. And I just remember thinking, oh, you know, art has to be life-size. I was in art school when I first started putting beads in my paintings. And I was really criticized for it. I was always struggling for the legitimacy of my material. And in order to take the work to another place, I needed it to be real. It couldn't be a fake. In other words, it wasn't enough to just cover half of something. It was really a thing that came from another place. If you had the underside of something covered, it meant that this wasn't a fake. It wasn't a cheat. It was truly this magical object, and that was what I was trying to do with the early work, like the kitchen. Work that perishes with the using, like cleaning, cooking, sewing. There's no memory to that. There's nothing holding that. There's no a monument to that kind of labor. And you can never see the beauty that's there. So the kitchen was about making a monument to labor and the most impossible thing I could think of. I didn't have any money. I didn't have any support. I didn't have a grant. I was a waitress. I sold prom dresses and I would have a day job and then buy my time to make my work. So as I became more successful in my work, that impetus, that drive, that difficulty was harder to feel because there was support. So how do you, how do you stay real when you have support? And for me, that's meant being involved and working with people where I can make a difference in the daily process. I had the idea to make a project that I was hoping would, would help people, that the, the actual making could have meaning and, and significance in the real world. The thing that I've learned more than anything is that I had more to learn than I had to give. Working with artisans in South Africa, the daily life, what happens when work is being made in different places across different townships, children are there, family is there, and, and the oil from the hand and from the cooking, it's all there in that small repetitive act. Continuous Mile, which was a piece that was made in eight different townships surrounding KwaZulu-Natal, and my idea was that we were kind of holding hands across the miles. The labor and hands that went into it was going to stretch, and you have this long, long, long single piece of rope. So it's all one singular piece of rope that's then coiled and makes a hole. My work is so much about trying to say, isn't that beautiful? Isn't this beautiful? It can be so sort of stunning. Do your work. This is a privilege. It's a privilege. The act of making is, is a joy, and to stay with that, stay with the making, stay with the doing. And in the creative field, that means take a workmanlike attitude, because God knows there's people working a lot, lot, lot harder at something else. So it's a privilege if you're sitting somewhere in a clean room doing something out of your imagination. That's a privilege.